The last time we were here on Leech Lake, it was post fishing opener. That was a couple months ago now. It's July, it's the middle of July. We are now in, sum in summer fishing patterns on Leech Lake, Winnebagosh, Cass Lake, across Ellaway country here in north central Minnesota. We have fish transitioning to their summer patterns. What does that mean? It means there's more food. When it comes to walleyes, we have crayfish, we have perch, we have bug hatches that are just finishing up, finally being done. So the fish are dispersing, they're setting up for the rest of their summer, and it's our job to figure out where they're at. Also, that other species that we love to chase, the muskies, it's musky season, they're starting to go. So today, I have a multi-species angler joining me. Can't wait to see him. He's gonna be here in a few minutes. As soon as we get our coffee and get our lunch packed, we're gonna hit the water here on Leech, maybe another lake. We'll see what happens. We're just gonna go fishing today. We're gonna to make sure that we have our guide spots set up for the rest of the summer. Find those new, school, those new schools that are uh, ready to bite, those eaters, those nice 14 to 18 inches. But it's a day off, so we wanna chase some big fish, muskies and big walleyes. You ever seen a fly like that? Or a moth? Mm -mm. Almost looks like a larvae stage or something. Well, it wasn't there when I cleaned my truck last night. <laughs> yeah. That's good luck. That's a Toby moth. The initials. Toby starts with a T. So as I mentioned, um, I have a multi-species angler joining me today. One of our, one of our best multi-species angler fishing guides, Nick Miltimore. Nick Miltimore drove up this morning from Brainerd where he's been fishing. Um, busy with work, life, you know, like all of us. I've uh, been guiding the Brainerd Lakes area, but also he's been coming up here a time or two. Nick's very good at breaking down water. Nick can show up on Leech Lake or any lake, multi-different lakes, multi-species. Nick can show up break down the lake, side imaging, forward facing sonar, and put people on fish. And he's very good with reactionary type bites, which is probably what we're gonna end up doing today a little bit. We'll talk about our bite, but very good with artificial baits. Super happy to have Nick. I know I'm gonna learn from it, which means you are too. Ready to go fishing, buddy? I am, it's like a nice day. Me too, I gotta poop though, so I'm gonna go in there. Guiding, while to some people on the outside it might seem like a glamorous thing, it's a lot of work. But every time somebody steps into my boat for a guide trip, it's it's their trip. This is their trip. And oh spending the day gosh, on the water with people, it's, just, it's really a dream come true. It's just a truly special experience. Setting the hook, netting the fish, high-fiving people, and that's truly the passion. Yeah. What drives me is fishing different species and making memories with people. It's, it's a phenomenal thing. And that's what keeps me coming back. That's what fuels my fire for guiding. Every day is something new and seeing the smiles on people's faces when they catch that personal best makes it all worthwhile. And I love watching kids get addicted to uh, fishing. We are a family. Between all of us, we spend countless hours on the water. And at the end of the day, it's about making sure that the people that were in your boat learned something and enjoyed that experience and made some memories along the way. 31 inch baby! Woo -hoo -hoo! Chris, you're up. Am I going to get this one, Nick? Get him. There you go. Beautiful fish. Oh, boy. One of my faves. That's a little nicer one. Woo! Yeah! There we go, buddy. Right away! What a beautiful leech leg musky, those spots. It's not a super tan. Nice fish, buddy. Nice. That's a good one. Oh, oh there we go. There we go. First nice fish of the day. Yeah. On top of these fish, like you said. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on. <laughs> yeah! Get that. That is how you catch the leech like you're in there. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's the awesome. hard oh. in the day. We wanted to so, go catch a big one. Let's pick it. Nice. Yeah. 37. Eight minutes to go. Woo! The Guide Life with Leisure Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by these great partners.
why don't you just tell us what you've been doing? What has your last few trips been? Where have you been? And uh, how's it going? Okay. Yeah, it's been a good summer so far. Um, started a lot of the spring up here on Leech Lake, and my last several weeks I've been guiding in the Brainerd area. Uh, Gull Lake, Pelican Lake, North Long, a little bit on the Whitefish Chain, um, and that's been a pretty good bite. And yeah. So the last, last time you were on Leech Lake was? Ah, uh, three or four weeks ago. Three or four weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, how was the bite then? And we'll compare it to what I think is going on now. Uh, I was still a pretty shallow spring bite, fishing the sand flats, um, fishing some shallow rock, uh, forward-facing sonar, throwing bobbers and leeches at pods of fish. And then that's your typical bug hatch is happening mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago. Fish are transitioning, so we had our shiner bite in show number one that we saw, yeah. and then they move out, and so then, yep, on sand flats, maybe some reactionary bites with bobbers and, and whatnot too. And now the fish have probably still the same locations, have slid a little bit deeper, because now we have weed growth that's happening on the yep. sand flats, and then the, the bait fish, the mayflies, have kind of dispersed and are gone from, the, gone from the rock, so now they're chasing crayfish both shallow and deeper wherever the crayfish happen to be, which seems to be everywhere at Leech Lake, yeah. right? So wherever that best bite is, it seems to be where the fish are. But in all those pin minnows, those baby perch, they're moving in and off the structure with the temperature, with the sun up and down in the water column, and the fish are following. So as you would know, with summer fishing, you kind of have to go where the bait is yeah. first, find the bait, find the fish. And uh, so the transition has been from where you were, probably the same locations, even some of the same tactics, but you just got to move around. They're a little bit more full. They're a little bit more pressured. So things can be tough. The bite has been a little slower here the last few few weeks. Sure. Um, and uh, but we're still getting them. Guys were out yesterday. They, we did a corporate group yesterday, and and uh, Jeremiah and and Murph and Chuck and they got all, all got their fish. But it was slow in the morning, 10 o'clock, which is kind of when that major was yesterday. The fish bit and they got them. So Nick, what's your favorite way to catch a walleye? Whatever way they're biting that day. Well, I know that's the stock answer, <laughs> but that's not good enough. Uh, you know, corking, whatever it is. I know netting the fish and catching them is fine, but if you could have your preference. I can have my what preference. What is the most fun? I like to throw a jig and a shiner. I, I look forward to that spring bite all year of throwing a jig and a minnow, jig and a shiner, up shallow, aggressive fish. That's the bite I wait for all season probably. And Nick's being modest. He's very good with reactionary bite. And jig and shiner is a reactionary bite. The fish are chasing shiners. Yeah. But he can cast, he can dangle that presentation perfectly and he can get that bite. And selfishly, I'm still learning plastics. I'm jig wraps, been doing it, but I don't have all the different cadences, you know, nailed down. And I know Nick is that guy that could help me and help you get bit. So looking forward to doing some reactionary bite stuff today, both for walleyes, maybe even a big toothy critter, you know, the muskies, and uh, yeah. catch a couple of fish. Should be fun day. Let's go get them. He's coming. Got him? Yep. Nice. That was cool. I could see that fish eat. Feel like a decent walleye? Yeah, it feels like a good one. Think we got a big enough net? I hope so. So we're just out here cruising around, trying to feel in a few fish. Artificials. There he is, the man working his jig perfectly. That's a nice fish, Nick. That's a good one. Nice. Hope we get him in. Uh, artificial baits, summer fishing. This is cool, we get this in and we kind of talk about what we're doing here. It's gonna be a good one, Toby. Well, that's what kind of the, that's what we're hoping for. A little different than uh, just slipping a bobber out in front of him and, geez, what do you got? I don't know. We've had a little yeah. bit of diversity this morning. I messed up something on my power settings of my graph and Fish didn't comes. have a, a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good start to our we show. Go. <laughs> nice job. Hey, good one. Artificial baits. Midsummer, take a little break from throwing corks and catching just absolute sumos of walleye. Snicky boy. Artificial bait. You can totally see that fish come up and eat. Forward facing sonar is, uh, how can I help you? I got it right here. That's a beautiful fish. We might want to get a little measurement of that thing. I'll get this out a little bit. 
Um, throw on the quick, just get a quick, we'll make this quick and 28 inch or so. Yeah, right around 28, 28 yeah. and a half. Beautiful start to our day. Yeah, we'll take that, huh? Talk about that fish real quick and we'll let it go, but uh, what well, did we do, what did we see? Well, we're driving around, we see them on forward facing sonar and uh, just cast out at them in open water and work a, a plastic rake back to them right over the top of them, watch them come up and, and move on it. That's crazy, you know, see if we fish, make a few casts, they all aren't moving, Right. they all aren't eating. Yeah, we've There's casted several of fish here. that haven't done anything. Let's get them away, put them back and... Uh... So that was a sweet no, fish. No. That was a really sweet fish. Nice job. Yeah, so thank you. what I want to ask though is, you know, I've heard about open water fishing and or, or reactionary bites with fish, right. whether we're using jig wraps or, or plastics or whatever it is. Um, a lot of people have monofilament on their line. Some people use braid. Some people use fluorocarbon. Tell me about your setup sure. and what the concept was. Like, what are you doing and why, why do you choose the line? Why do you choose that setup? Tell me what you were doing there and how does a, how do one of our viewers replicate this so kind of take us from from the reel all the way down to the what's on the end the terminal tackle sure sure uh, I'm fishing it on a seven foot medium rod uh, I fish braid and I fish a high vis 10 pound braid I use a uni knot and I tie into a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader it's a three quarter ounce uh, jig head and a champ swimmer swim bait and uh, it's it's an aggressive heavy jig we're deep water and keeping it above those fish and just ripping it hard now, when you say deep water, we're in deep water, but the mm -hmm. fish aren't necessarily. Fish aren't. Nope. Fish are suspended. Yeah. And so, you know, tournaments nowadays, a lot of guys are winning tournaments, throwing corks, a lot of bobber mm -hmm. fishing tournaments, or a lot of tournaments are being won on bobber fishing. But another option is, of course, jig wraps and, yeah. and now plastics, right? Right. But the same concept. So when we're talking about walleyes or muskies or whatever the predator is that's out here, why are they out here and what are they doing, do you think? Uh, chasing bait fish. There's so big pods of bait fish we're seeing on the on the sonar too, and they're chasing that bait. So they're looking up, yep. in a sense. They're looking yep. up, and when they see that first meal that comes by, that happens to be a 3.8 yep. uh, inches long, which is about the same size as these perch out here. They just come chase it. Huh? Yeah. They... So, so is there anything you're doing with their? Maybe as a tip or whatever, you can tell like, and we'll probably get some more footage of it. But what are we? What are you doing with that bait? Are you just casting and reeling it in, or? Yeah, just casting it just beyond the fish, getting it over the top of the fish and letting it fall, and then snapping it, and making them, you know, get that reaction bite out of them. Well, you Almost a, like you'd fish a jig and wrap. You did a good job on that one. Yeah, thank you. Nice job. Yeah. So we got one dialed in forward-facing sonar, and it's very important to know your angles and your distance. This fish is 90 feet out, so that's good cast. But with a Three quarter ounce jig head, you can get there as long as you can get the the bait to get towards the fish. She's moving to the left on you. That's where I was. So just making the right cast, and and you don't have to fish it too much until you know you're on the right fish. When you're using forward facing sonar, you're playing a video game per se, and and it's just important that you get your bait in front of the fish. should be somewhere in there so as we can see on here I got a bait coming I'm on the right angle I can see my bait I can see the fish I'm gonna get up a little higher I'm gonna drop it work it above them a little bit drop it right to them and then play keep away if it engages drop it death fall right past the fish he's going down too That fish is not playing the game. Next. <laughs> My guess is that might be the one you just caught. Another one over here. There. There you go. Moving with you. Oop, it's coming up fast. I'm gonna hit it. There we go. Oh, that was a piker. Was it a pike? Top him right now. He's moving with you. He's on you. Moving fast. Coming with you. You're gonna see him. Oh. Definitely a musky. Yep. He's still sitting there. Look how clear that is. Yep. So here's the deal. We've been fishing around. You got that nice fish earlier on, throwing the artificial, you know, champ swimmer, reactionary stuff. 
we've noticed the fish have kind of belly down and typical summer patterns with all that food a lot of them have fed and they're just kind of chilling out and they probably won't get super aggressive at least in this deeper water until later so that doesn't mean we necessarily have to go home right what it means is we need to try to fish maybe some different locations so we got some wind nows cranked up we're gonna go try to find some weeds and some rock fish and you know maybe we'll still use artificials maybe we'll get we do have some leeches try some bobbers but we're just gonna go fishing yeah. right Let's catch try some to fish. Uh, yeah try to make some react whether it's a live or artificial bait we'll try to get some fish so Great start. Yeah, that was a that was a good one, and uh, we see a couple of muskies out here. Yep. Um, obviously, we saw them tailing up and chasing baits a little bit. Yep. Some right to the boat, no big eats. I lost a fish, Close had a couple of bites on uh, on uh, the walleyes too, but uh, not my day on that deal. But you got a nice one. Let's go. Uh, let's go to a different part of Leech Lake here and see if we can get some to go on on uh, bobbers or something up shallow. Yeah, that sounds good. Great. Fish where the fish are. That part ain't rocket science. In terms of walleye production, Leech Lake is best. Trapper's Landing Lodge on the south shore of Leech Lake has the finest lodging on the entire lake. With renowned angling expert Josh Pullivan managing the property, Trapper's Landing is the place to be. Opening weekend and all season long. Fish where the fish are. Stay at Trapper's. Call for reservations 218-836-2500. Stop into Ray Sport and Marine today to check out our remaining 2022 in stock inventory or place your 2023 order with guaranteed price lock until September 1st. After September 1st, prices are subject to change, so now is the time to reserve your new boat. From tillers to side councils and full windshield models, we sell them all. Our sales and service team is here to help you get on the water. Ray Sport and Marine, 896 Northeast 1st Street, Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Atta boy, Nikki. Felt him thump that. Good fish? Yeah, it's not a bad one. Let me get a big musky net for you then. Catch a walleye out of. Coming up. There we go. <laughs> nice fish. Made a little adjustment. Came to a different part of the lake, a little darker water. Same tactic. Same tactic, just off a rock pile. And you are hot again. Reactionary bite. Where'd a little, uh, oh, came off. Came Perfect. Off right in the net. <laughs> Change it up a little bit. Oh, it's a big dip net. I think we uh, pull them out of there. Yeah, pull that out of there. Just a nice 22 inch or something like that. Again, big fish, but you said you, said you felt him smack it? Yeah, he thumped it hard. Beautiful fish. Yeah, nice one. You know, just little, like we do every day in guiding, right? You get, you get a little bit of a slow period. Yep. And, and conditions change. You know, I think, the, I think the definition of insanity is just repeating the same yeah. thing over and over and expecting change. Well, I was about going insane casting that muskies that wouldn't move and I wasn't getting bit. And here we go again. We pulled up yep. the new spot and you got another dandy. Beauty. It's my turn. Nick, at some point, I'm going to get a bite too. Let's do it. Your turn. <laughs> Good job. Thanks, Toby. It's fun. Yeah. Let's pull it up here. We're just sitting up. There's a six foot spot we've been guiding, you know, this summer. And there's a six foot little ledge here. I brought big boulders on it. And I know there's some big wallies on it. Um, and I haven't had a chance to try reactionary bite. You know, this is to me more fun, maybe, just to do something different than just slip corks. But 
since I can't do it, I might have to throw a cork. In fact, I'm gonna try throwing a cork. Is that all right? Yeah, let's do all it. Right. Perfect. So I got all the components we're using today right here. I'm gonna retie this. I got my main line right here. Here's my fluorocarbon leader. I'm gonna put a uni knot in to connect the two lines. Pull them together. And that's our uni knot. We'll trim the tag ends like that. Double check it. Looks good. Take about a two and a half foot piece of this. Toby needs a new scissors. You need scissors? No, I got one up here. It's just not the sharpest. Tighten our line up a little bit. We're going to put that three quarter ounce jig on this end. And then I'm going to show you how to thread a plastic. Oh, they're stacked. Toby's on fish back there. Money. It's always important to wedge your fluorocarbon knot so they slide and the line doesn't burn. Eat it. There's... There go. Eat it. Now the key to rigging a plastic like this is making sure that you get it on nice and straight so that it doesn't swim funny in the water. So what I like to do is I like to put the nose where it's going to go, look at the top of the plastic and mark where that hook's going to come out. Now and then I start threading it on nice and straight. this, make that hook pop out right in the center of the bait, right where I marked it lengthwise. And then slowly work the nose end carefully up over the hook keepers, trying not to rip it up. And on a hook like this, it's got a big prong hook keeper plus some smaller ones, so it does a pretty good job of holding them. Sometimes if you're using a hook that doesn't have that, you can put a little bead of super glue in the front, that'll keep it on. The idea is to have it on there nice and straight in the center of the bait, looking just like that. That's it. That's what we're doing. Jacoby, you're down. There we go. Nick. You got one. I just needed you to... I was watching your jig. <laughs> Had to take your eye off it for a minute. This is a decent fish. I was watching your jig go by the fish. And I'm like, well, that looks like there's one right by my, right by my uh, bobber. And you're like, hey, you're down. I'm like, oh. Thank you, Active Target, Nick. Feels like a kind of like the fish you just caught, a low 20 incher maybe, maybe yeah. it's bigger. Definitely a nice fish though. Watch it's those like rod tips right one. by your hand. That's good, I'll go right over the top of them. So we can get them by you. Six pound line, a little lighter. I'm not gonna reef on it too much. Just a nice representative of another Leech Lake walleye. Probably ones that are just a little too big to keep. But I finally got bit, whether we get it in or not. Who knows? Oh, we're gonna you mess it. it with that net. I was gonna say, if I miss with this, we got issues. We're gonna have to catch them twice just to get them out of here. Right? These new bobber rods are really nice. They, they're they over eight feet long, and you have so much shock absorber right there. Like a 20 incher? Yeah, a little over, 22 maybe. There we go, he's coming. Oh, a little bigger than that even. Yeah, that's nice a nice fish, one. Toby. Good Dang fish. it. Holy cow, that's bigger than I thought. And thank you, Active Target, and the reactionary guru, Nick, apparently, watching my barber. You know, my dad always said, a watch barber never goes down. How many that's times right. have you heard that before? That's right. Look at that beautiful fish on the old slip cork. You know, sometimes you just got to dummy it down a little bit when you don't have it, and I don't have it today. There's a lot going on. But we put the put the cork out and the after dinner mint for a walleye, which is a leech, right? That's what they say. Dusty Minky, if you know Dusty Minky, taught me that. Well, he got it good. I don't think he was coming off. I'm gonna need a pliers. Can you hold that for yeah, me for a bit. second? Maybe some slack here too. So we were fishing over, you know, 10 feet down over 25, 30 feet of water and not getting bit at all. And uh, kind of switch gears. That fish came out of seven feet. Seven feet of water. So are all the fish big? No, they're not all big. And are they all deep? No, they're not all deep. But there's big ones and little ones in both places. And that one succumbed to a little leech. That's like a 25 incher probably. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. Nice fish. Thank you, buddy. Guess you're a star now. All right, so we'll let him go. 
There's more down there. There's a lot more out there. We'll see if we can get some more, uh, more of those boys. Love it. Awesome. Thank you. So, you know, we got a high pressure day, right? We kind of went from, well, I don't know if it's high pressure or not, but I'm assuming the sun came out and everything over that deep water went. Right. We can literally see fish of all species going from 10 feet down to bouncing in and out of the mud, you know, and uh, the reactionary bite there just wasn't happening anymore. Water temperature is a little cooler over there, pop into a little stained water here, and now we have water temps in the low 70s again. And lo and behold, a couple of fish in a few minutes. That's all it takes. See if we can get another one. I still want to try to catch a big toothy critter, and I would actually like to feel a bite or see my own bobber go down. <laughs> <laughs> Toby, you're down. <laughs> well, I kept thinking you were going to set the hook, and that's how finally I looked. I'm like, it's not watching. <laughs> Love it. So, are you recording, Joe? Yep. Just switched over to a bobber and got a bite. You know, we have some wind today, we have some waves. So, there's different ways to bobber fish. Obviously, got a slip float, egg sinker, even a little split shot on here. Fluorocarbon leader to a little number 16, or 16th ounce jig. Um, pretty typical, just I like to, when it's windy like this, I like to hook them just like I would with a leech on a lindy rig. So just below the sucker, in the middle, like so, a little extra meat so they don't tear off so easy. And with current, the bobber is going to stay ahead of the, the jig in a sense. So when it's going to be in the water, it's going to be in the current like this. If we had a flat calm day, this would sit straight down and wouldn't get a lot of action. At that point, I'd probably use a plain hook and take that split shut off so this leech can actually move around on the leader. But since we have wind, a lot of weight, a lot of weight allows that bobber to just barely stay afloat. And this jig actually does that ju just that. It jigs in the water with the leech. And so with wind, it's hard to beat a jig. When it's calm, it's hard to beat a plain hook. There's a little tip for you. And then have somebody watch your bobber for you because that helps too because I forget to do that. <laughs> That's it. This fish. We can get him in. Nice big fish down there. We tried to go one more chance for a muskie today. And, uh, been a fun day. We've caught some really nice fish. There's another one if we can get them in. Quality fish. Yeah. Just something different, you know, about artificial baits. And I actually saw this one eat it. I think it's a pike. You know, and there's a lot of different species that can eat. This would be a nice pike if we can get them in. Leech Lake is uh, not known for giant pike, but there's some really nice ones, and that's, that's a pretty good, good one. That's a quality pike there. Oh, and he came off right there, but that's okay. I'm sure we got good footage of that. He jumped, he opened his mouth. You know, we're out here, we're multi-species fishing, we had smallies. We've had muskies take stabs at it. Yeah, come close. And uh, you know, that was a big pike. That's a, that was a really nice pike for Leech yeah. Lake, mid 30 incher maybe. Um, got some nice walleyes, some smallies. Got bit off once by a toothy critter. And then we had that guy. So I know you gotta run. Yeah. Gotta get home, life happens. It does. Mom's got to work and you got to get home to the babies. Quality fish day. But I'm going to take our cameraman and I heard about a hot evening bite. That'd so be a good time. Thank you very much, yeah. sir. Thanks, Appreciate Toby. it. Yeah, always fun. Let's head for the shed. We're out here today and we've got this Maluna unhinged cooler made in the USA, made right here in Minnesota. And this thing is absolutely amazing. Last thing we want to worry about in the morning is making sure that we have enough ice in the boat. We know that when we fill up our Maluna on the start of the week, that towards the end of the week, we're still going to have cold ice inside of there. Oversized handles, they're lightweight, easy to haul around, plenty of room. And these things are top notch. You want a cooler that'll keep ice for several days on end, these Maluna unhinged are where it's at.
Family Outdoor Outfitters is the number one ice fishing headquarters. We have everything you need from today's firearms to the latest fishing electronics and the hottest footwear and outdoor apparel. We only carry the best brands at the best prices. Have a question? No problem. We have the most knowledgeable team in the business ready to answer your call personally seven days a week. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota or touching your screen with our state-of-the-art distribution center, we can get you gear when you need it fast. Cast or blast, Reeds has the best service, best advice, and best price guaranteed. Well, a little change of plans. We just finished up with Nikki Boy on uh, Leech Lake, and, and our plan was to get up and maybe try something different, maybe head to Winnie, but there's a storm coming, and the storm is just gonna skirt Leech Lake, not gonna affect us. It's up there by Winnie, gonna hit the part of the lake we were gonna fish. So change of plans. We also have a bite going on in Le Leech for muskies. So I'm now, instead of going out with a different guide, we are going to join Bob Weeks, who's one of our guides, Agency Bay Lodge, one of our sponsors, works out perfectly. We're going over here to talk a little musky fishing with him instead of trolling for walleyes up on Winnie. We're going to go to uh, lead back to Agency Bay Lodge and we're going to talk to Bob about muskies, hop in the boat with him, and at sundown, happens to be moonrise, we're going to try to get a muskie. What's going on, big guy? Hey guys, how we doing? Good. Hi, Good to see you, man. Nice to see you, Bob. You ready to fish? Corey, how you doing? Good, how about you? Good. Jan, give me a hug. Hug <laughs> You guys, these are the weeks. We got Bob, Corey, Jen, the uh, owners of Agency Bay Lodge. We're lucky, of course, to have them as a sponsor. But more importantly, when people call us, Jen is the one that takes care of a lot of the people, and Bob guides for it with us. And the fishermen of the family that pick cuts them off the dock and out of the boats is Corey. Uh, we just finished our morning session here on Leech Lake fishing artificials for fish. Nick Miltimore was with and we caught some big walleyes. We tried to catch some muskies in the Walker Bay area, open water stuff a little bit. Notice like they were starting to push shallow yep. a little bit. So we kind of struck out. We did have some chase, but did not catch, did not catch any, uh, any muskies, just some big walleyes. We were gonna go to Winnie, then you know that storm's gonna yep. be up there tonight. Yep. So we kind of turned around, re-looped, and Bob here said he uh, might have something going on with muskies. So we're gonna find more about that. Bob, tell me what you know about muskies. Maybe let's show off some yeah. of your tackle over here and, yeah, and uh, let's talking, talk a little little shop. Yeah, talking about some of the baits, I think could be a good transition to talking muskies. Um, you know, Toby, I like a couple things that you mentioned there. Um, the storm, right? I always like if there's gonna be a storm on the horizon, a little bit of a pressure change, but uh, you know, this one doesn't look like it's gonna get close to us, which means that we can fish safely. Um, you mentioned open water muskies. Kind of what I'm seeing right now is 50-50, uh, right? Yeah. We still have some fish out eating Cisco's, cruising the basins, uh, but we're starting to see fish push up a little bit shallow and be in the weeds and be on the rocks and, and even starting to see some fish on sand, which I'm hopeful we can kind of cruise some sand tonight Take and see if we can find yeah. some, absolutely. Um, so my mentality when those fish start to move shallow is uh, fish are transitioning from eating Cisco's to eating perch. And so I want to catch fish through eating perch couple reasons for that um, they're on the structure so we can cast to them that makes a little bit makes a little bit more sense as opposed to cruising out in open water trolling sure. or yeah. or looking with our electronics and then so for me smaller baits and when muskies are eating perch it means they have to eat more often to uh, keep their metabolism going so as these water temperatures are warming you know seeing some mid 70s pretty consistently right now um, as these water temperatures are warming and these fish move shallow throwing perch sized baits um, fishing them fairly fast can be uh, can be advantageous to catching that muskie that went from maybe eating once a day or once every other day on a big fat healthy Cisco to maybe even eating multiple times a day because nice. what what they catch advantage are us. exactly advantage <laughs> us you know and so smaller bucktails um, like this or swim baits like these um, are, are going to be kind of our go-to arsenal. Um, you know, right now we've got high skies, so it might be ripping some rubber through the weeds and sure. getting, getting some reaction strikes on, on that. But 
yeah, it's, uh, you know, summer peak, I think, is just getting started. And, you know, we've got a good month window where I think that we can, um, you know, really work spots effectively and, and get a fish to get a fish to eat. And we've been on a great evening pattern. Um, so hopefully that plays out for us again tonight. Tell me about, just real quickly, your resort, you're kind of trying to cater to musky fishermen. Absolutely. And mu what, what do you have here that well, you might not find somewhere else? So a few things about I appreciate the question, Toby, a few things about that. You know, it's always fun for musky anglers to go to a show in the winter or to go to one of those bigger, more popular musky shops. And you get to see tons and tons of baits. But what we try to do here, being on Leech Lake, is use the knowledge of all the local guides, use the knowledge of the bait manufacturers that we carry to have specific baits, colors, sizes, styles that produce on Leech Lake. So you, we may not have every single color that the manufacturer makes or every single size that the manufacturer makes but what we have is used by local guide knowledge and manufacturer knowledge so that the colors that we do have you can be sure are exactly what you would want on leech um, colors and sizes Perfect. i should say yeah. and one other thing that i get super excited about is the component section here so uh, if you buy a bait that maybe should have a split ring on the eye but it doesn't come with one then we can add that right there to it. We can walk out on the dock and cast and test baits and make sure that, you know, if you're buying a suic, for example, we bend the fin, we put the we put the um, yeah, split right. ring on the yeah. eye, we get you out on the dock, we make sure that you understand the cadence and kind of some of those strike triggering mentalities, you know, on how to get more fish. Um, you know, if we want a little bit more noise to a bait, you know, let's say that we want to, we, we love throwing this bait, but we want it to get a little bit more noise and we can grab some split rings and get that hook to hit that, that prop, yeah. right. And get a little bit more noise. Um, and Just so those are that next level. Right? That's, that's exactly that personal. Right. Yes. Yeah, so when you come in and, in in you, whether you stay here or you come in for some advice on baits, you know, a bait won't leave without, Hey, you know, if you're buying, well, this is a good Personal example. Touch. If you're buying this bait, we're going to talk about maybe not adding a split ring because I'm throwing the smaller top water when the water's calm. If you're buying this bait, then we're going to talk about, do we want to add some split rings because I'm throwing this when it's at least one to two footers. Sure. So when there's wind noise, wave noise, then we want to add a little bit of noise to that bait and get that fish to, to be attracted to that bait a little bit more. So those are some simple things that we talk about. So as you walk down the wall, um, you know, is it a bait, you know, and you talk about custom, this is an H2O crank that uh, is an agency Bay Lodge color. You can only find it here. Um, you know, this bait has weights. Yep. So you can use the same weight that you would use for your beavers, that you would use for your Suix in this H2O cranky nitro. And um, we talk about that. So yeah. and we talk about when to use it and when not to use it and Sweet. which which lip to buy for the different types of things that we're fishing or finding fish on. So um, that's where, you know, I yeah. get pretty fired up and we have a lot of fun helping, helping musky customers here. Yeah, no, that's great. And as you guys can tell, he's excited about musky, musky fishing, musky catching, chasing muskies. I am too. Super excited. Get something to eat. Yeah. Get something to eat yeah. here. We offer that too yeah. at ACBA Lodge. Yeah. Recharge our batteries and the yeah. camera batteries. Yeah. And then we're going to hit the water. Yeah. So we're in the boat. We just talked about strategy. Let me get this right. We're going out here. We're going to go through yep. the Roosevelt Channel, Main yep. Lake. Yep. We're going to do a little scouting. Yep. Scan, scan some beaches, maybe some weeds. Yep. And then at peak time, we're going to make some casts. Yep. Let's, so, yes. Let's do it. Yeah. Boom. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't try to expand. Yeah, you, sorry. Come on. Yeah, I forgot the instruction <laughs> no already. I'm, I'm like thinking about where we're going to go, what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're just follow instruction it. well. All right. Done. <laughs> cool. I cannot believe that fish didn't eat. He was well, right on it. it. Yeah. Do you have a hot one? Yeah, he was right on it. Man. Oh, this looks so 
sexy. Oh! <laughs> Did he eat it? No, he hit the blades. Oh! But how cool was that that I literally was saying sexy right when that fish came up and he ate it? Oh, it was like a 36 incher, but. Did you see the fish, Toby? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw it. So here's what just happened. We've been out here grinding. This has been some fun. It's like it's relaxing. We had a we had our show earlier today, got out here, dodged a storm on Winnie, came out here on Leech Lake with Bob and and uh throwing a little bucktail out here. And we're obviously we're in the dark. We got the moon up here, we got a you know the moon's up, and uh I was just saying how sexy this lure looked. And as I said that, a fish came from right below and chowed it, but hit the blades, no hooks, and I probably botched it, typical, <laughs> that's what I do. But, little action. There's a window here, Bob. 11.20 probably too, right it's about when you said we'd catch 11 it. 10. It's 11.10. It's 10. been 11.10. <laughs> Is it actually? It's just a hair after 11.10. Bob said at 11.10 we'd get a bite, and I just had a bite. Whether we catch it or not, this has been a great night, and I just had a bite right there, both side. On the L turn, boom, fish came up. Ate it, no hooks. The funny thing is, we're not at the G We fished yet, the last couple of spots. The bait I'm fishing right now has produced the fish the last two nights. And Toby's been fishing it all night. And I've been fishing blades. And uh, we got to the spot, and Toby says, I'm feeling blades. So we switched, and uh, he was right. He made the right call. But. The big ones have been eating this bait. Yeah. So we'll find that big one at that 1210 window for you, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the moon. It's beautiful. So we do this guide life deal. You know, it's it's a grind. Like we fish hard for muskies. Bob's been at it already, you know, and and it's been a grind because it's not really prime in July. It's not like we talked about, it's transition time. These fish are just pushing up to the weeds, which we're fishing, and they're out over deep water, and they're just showing up. So when you can find a fresh fish, like I just did, uh, you have a chance to catch them, but there's just not, all the muskies aren't up here yet. So we're out here giving it a hope, you know, and giving it a try, but what I was getting to is the guide life. Like we were gonna go up and troll on Winnie, and I was looking forward to that, just to relax and cast, or re relax and troll. And now I'm just like, maybe to a fault, kind of checked out, just chucking lures, not thinking about finding fish for clients, but breaking down the lake, Bob and I are, because we have musky trips coming up and and uh, I got chowed <laughs> right there, but uh, no hooks, but there's hope. They're biting apparently. There's more than one musky to live on this musky flat. There's one, fish. Okay. Yep. Here's our net. God, fucker's coming at me. Oh, that's a big walleye! <laughs> Did I not tell you, Bob? No, I what know. What did I just get done saying? I'm like, dude, this is like the best spot for big walleyes. Didn't I tell you that this has been the money bait that's producing fish after dark? <laughs> well, absolutely, and it did. And who cares? Hey, this whole show today has been about artificial baits and big walleyes, muskies. It doesn't matter. I just missed one over there. I guarantee it wasn't a walleye. No, I know. <laughs> and you just smoked but a you, giant walleye. You, um, I'm going to grab pliers here, but uh, you hit the 1110 bite. <laughs> and uh, this fish was on the 1210 bite. So we've been grinding, we've been working hard. Oh, um, that's a beauty. Bite. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's a really nice walleye. I'm gonna grab some pliers here and we'll get it unhooked and take a quick look at it. You know, I'm trying really hard to be a multi-species angler. <laughs> it just seems like everything we do is walleye. And I'm not saying that like I'm the walleye guy, but it's just I'm, I'm jinxed with only being able to get walleyes in the boat. That is a beauty. So that, that bait in the last week has been the number one producer in my boat. We've gotten some big muskies, we've gotten some small to medium sized muskies, and this is the first walleye that decided to eat it, but, you know. Well, that's because you weren't with Toby. That's true, that's true. 
but I, I really but, want to try to catch a muskie with one of our guide lives. And Chris did last year. We got a nice muskie. But uh, yeah, we just seem to catch walleyes on Leech Lake. For those of you who want to come catch giant walleyes, come to Leech Lake and throw muskie lures. That's uh, you know pretty much how it works. To your point about that too, you know, here's the we're in that July transition we've been talking about. Yep. But you know, I have people ask me all the time whether they're staying staying at the resort or fishing with me. When's the best time to catch big walleyes? And jokingly. I talk about let's go musky fishing in late August or September because we do catch a lot of walleyes like this um, while we're musky fishing. I want to see a walleye tournament one on musky baits. That's a goal of mine actually and uh, especially those September ones. For those of you that fish the MWC in Cass Lake, watch out. We're going to throw giant musky lures. No red tails. This will be fun. Oh yeah, look at that thing. Oh my goodness. Bob. Hey, not okay. bad for the 1210 bite. Not what we were looking for, but that uh, is at least a 28 inch walleye. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beauty. And we're out here and we're just fishing. We're having fun. The guide life, we grind every day, right? We get people yeah. fish and it doesn't matter. And we have a minute to get out here and try to chase muskies because yeah. we have the August run coming, right? And it's going to be it's going to be a fantastic deal. Leech Lake, the muskies are here everywhere. Like it's fantastic when they're going. But typical as a guide trip, you always have action, whether you're catching a pike or a giant walleye, even during our musky trips when we don't necessarily. And we did have chances tonight, right? We had yep. fowls, yep. but we got big giant walleyes. Yep. And whether we catch a muskie or not, this is a great ending to a great day. We caught big walleyes all day today. And in fact, Bob, some of the, some of the walleyes we caught in our show today were on this exact same spot. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't think that one was double hooked, but there was a lot of big walleyes here and we saw some muskies on uh, on our forward facing sonar, which is why we're back here. We didn't get the muskie, but we got a nice walleye. Hey, Bob. Hey. All right. Great the 12, job. The 1210 bite. 1210 bite. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We've been here on Leech Lake grinding it out all day. Yeah. We tried to get off lake and go to a, go to Winnie and do something up there, but storms kept us here. Now we have a beautiful night. We got a bright night and we're out here casting. We may hit one more spot, but the guide life, we finally get a break from our yeah. grind with clients. We're out here yeah. exploring because yeah. we have musky trips coming yeah. up. And Leech Lake, as people know, is the Leech Lake musky strain, yeah. right? Bob, just yep. talk about that a little bit, about yeah. what's special about Leech Lake. Well, you know, I mean, it's exciting because it's, um, you know, it's all natural reproduction here in the lake. Uh, these fish are, you know, fighting for survival from the time they're born and, you know, we talk about it all the time. I mean, to me, the hardest fighting muskies I've ever caught are those natural reproduction muskies. So they're always really exciting when you get a chance to hook into one. Um, you know, there's a ton of muskies in the lake. Yep. Um, you know, so it's a fun lake to run and gun different styles of, of structure and, and, you know, whether it's rocks or sand and weeds, it's just a really fun lake to fish. And, uh, you know, it's never disappointing when you have a byproduct of a, of a walleye like that or, um, what not. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we, we were lucky to have 112,000 acres that is yes. full of muskies. Yeah. I mean, we're on the west side right now. Yep. We talked about rocks. We were maybe hoping to go to the south end today, yeah. trying some of that stuff. Yeah. But we're here. Here we are. We're out here right now. We're grinding. We caught a walleye, uh, but but it's been a great day. We, it was kind yeah. of a walleye day for us. We got a lot yeah. of big walleyes day on this show. Yeah. You know, we caught them in the daytime on plastics and then we caught one out now tonight and actually on one of the same places we caught them earlier today. Yeah. So it's been a great show. I want to thank you, Bob, very much yeah. as, a, as a sponsor of ours and as one of our guides, Bob and Jen, do a, as you met Jen earlier. She's the amazing, amazing part of our group at Leisure Outdoor Adventures. They handle the phones. They have an outstanding uh, resort here on Leech Lake in Agency Bay. And, and with that resort, kind of take, I mean, it's, it's catered to everybody, but it's really catered to the musky fishermen because as you just witnessed, there's a lot of knowledge here in this man and Bob is passionate yeah. about muskies and he will get you on muskies and he'll do everything he can to help you with musky fishing yeah. on Leech Lake. Yeah. So with that, we're going to call it a wrap. Yeah. And our next show, we're going to have a little bass fishing for dummies show where myself, Jim Ernster are going to join a pro and we're going to be on a Leech Lake or a lake real close by trying to get bit with big, big bass. Small mouth, large mouth, we don't care. We want to catch them all. We'll see you next time. 
Leisure Outdoor Adventures would like to thank all their sponsors for their support in making the guide life happen.